Hey guys, Jay here and welcome to another convention review. Today I'm going to be talking about Komoricon 2022. So just like every year there's going to be this video as well as a secondary video that goes along with this that's the merchant autographs show off type thing. I will link that up in the card and the description below. So most of the bad stuff that I'm going to be talking about that happened at this con are not first hand experience. They're not even second hand experience. I don't know what to call it. Stuff I saw on Facebook. Yeah, that'll be it. Uh, only one of the things, it's not really that bad, but that there's only one that I personally experienced that, like I said, wasn't that bad, so it's not a big deal. Uh, it's whatever. But um, I'll start off with those because this is not going to take very long. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot good or bad. It was just kind of in between. Um, I will start off, though, with still recommend this convention. They do some kind of crappy things once in a while, but... It's never usually all that bad and a lot of things get blown out of proportion There are some things that aren't blown out of proportion that should really change or whatever, but Other than that uh, It's it, the rest of it's usually really good and there's no never really too many problems, but I'll talk about these Secondhand I guess accounts of what I've seen people talk about that were bad. I guess I can't really give my Thoughts on it, but I, I guess I will um Maybe how to fix it. I don't know. So the first one is uh, the the lines for registration. So on Thursday, since uh, like I'm saying, I didn't experience this. On Thursday, everything went fast. Um, there, so we had to do two lines because they're doing the whole either prove you have your vaccination or prove that you have a negative COVID test to attend. Which that's fine. I have I have three. I have the main two vaccinations and then the, the third booster. So I'm all set to go. It doesn't matter to me. <laughs> so I can prove that anyway. Not a big deal. So you have to be in that line first. Then you get a wristband, which I actually think I showed it off last year. But it's just a black wristband. It's like one of those medical wristbands where it like clasps together and you can't take it off without cutting it. It's one of those type of things. And uh, it just says KomoriCon on it and it's thin and black. It's nothing special. It's better than the SakuraCon ones where they tighten it and you can't get it off and it only tightens. And it can cut off circulation in the middle of the night. That's horrible. Eh, whatever. Uh, so you get the wristband and they don't put it on too tight. So it's fine. It's loose enough that I can move around in it. It's not a problem to me. I don't have sensory issues. Uh, I know others do. So that is a problem for them. Um, I think they should talk to the convention when they get it and see if they can do anything about it. Um, maybe they will have a secondary person who can help them. Um, that doesn't affect me. So I can't speak on it. Um, I would rather one of them, uh, someone who has those those kind of uh, needs, speaks to them about it and not me because I won't know what I'm talking about. I would rather somebody who does do that. So anyway, got my wristband. That took maybe 10 minutes. <laughs> and then uh, the pre-reg line was literally less than five minutes. So it wasn't a big deal to me. I spent basically 25 minutes from the hotel and get my badge. Like that time frame was roughly 25 minutes with the walk and everything. So, not that bad. That's way better than SakuraCon's hour and a half that I've spent, or two hours that I've spent in pre-reg. So, it's fine. Uh, and then, the problem was, apparently on Friday and Saturday, I guess it changed Sunday because they moved things. Um, so, on, on Thursday, that the, the wristband booth was where peace bonding normally is. <laughs> so, uh... They had to move, <laughs> so um, and peace bonding is right outside of the doors to the main entrance to the main um, ba the badge pickup. So that table was being used. They couldn't be there, so they moved to the front where they were last year, which was up by the front doors where you walk in, and that's fine. That's just where they were last year, so it's okay. Um, and apparently that line alone was like eight hours or something like that, or. There, there was people who were saying that they waited eight hours in that line or eight hours in total. I don't know that and pick up. I don't know. Either way, it was eight hours that people were talking about. Uh, so somewhere, somewhere around there. And that's horrible. And they didn't change it on Saturday, apparently. It was the same. So the, everyone else had that problem again. People who had to show up Saturday to get their badges, maybe they were in school Friday or they worked Friday and they could only go Saturday and Sunday. Those people had to pick up their badges 
in an eight hour line and miss the entire day. Because by the end of that, all the stuff they wanted to go to was closed. By that time, the uh, Kamori Market or the Vendors Hall or whatever, an artist alley would be basically closed. And that's where all the autographs take place and all that kind of stuff. It's just, there's nothing left to do except the 18 plus panels or a couple other panels. And then walk around obviously, but, or do gaming. And that's it, there's nothing else to do. So they missed the entire day. But then Sunday it got moved to where uh, the wristbands were in a separate room. So I think some of the people that were in the lines didn't know which line they were in and everything and trying to do everything. And that made the lines go longer. Or maybe they just had less people to give the bands out. I don't know, maybe they got more, I don't know. But apparently they only had roughly 18 volunteers. And this is a volunteer run nonprofit thing so nobody gets paid, every single person, even the head is a volunteer. So um, they, uh, they only apparently had like 18, um, a bunch of them apparently left, like just were like, nah, screw this and left. And then no one else applied to be staff, I guess. So there was just like nobody. So that kind of made things worse because that means those, those staff members were spread out really far. So they had less people at each station, which means less people at registration, less people at the wristband area, you know, less people doing lines or doors. So everything was chaotic because of that. So I don't really blame the convention for any of that because there's nothing they can do when nobody applies, when nobody wants to help them. People complain and complain that that they're not doing their jobs or whatever, but then they don't go, they don't want to go and volunteer to do that job. You see what I mean? It's that's just it's just not how that's not how it works. Apparently, the only other bad things were like some of the bad staff. Like there was, I don't know what happened. Someone was talking about some racism thing. So I don't I don't know. I didn't even know. Any, I literally have no idea what happened. Someone was just saying that there was racist staff members, and didn't give any explanation. I have no idea what happened there. If someone else knows, please say it in the comments. But I personally have no idea because they, were, they just didn't say anything in the in the post. So I have no idea what happened. So the other technically bad thing happened before con. It just continued throughout. Um, about three weeks to a month before con, they released a statement saying that the COVID mask policies were changed. That they, they were being more strict and you they required the N95 or similar type masks. It didn't make really that many people mad that we had to do it. It made people mad like me that were so last minute. We're like, oh, well now we need to buy something else. Now it's like so close to con, to con, I need to buy another thing and hope it gets here in time or go find it when no store has them now. And they, we just didn't have them. So I had to go on Amazon and find something and just be like, hey, is this acceptable? And email them. But the problem with that is that they were giving accommodations for anyone who asked without proof. You didn't have to prove that you had a reason not to wear them because there's people with sensory uh, sensory issues like with the wristbands that having stuff around here uh, makes them hyperventilate because it's harder to breathe uh, and then it's also touching their face in places where they would you know it really bothers them with with their um, with their condition and there's a lot of other things like with me I have an ear injury back here I have actually a couple I have one where it's um, an earring that I used to have that like, skinned over with the earring in it and my mom had to pull it out and this was in middle school and there's still a scar back there and I can, it's like still tender uh, it still kind of hurts it's hurts ever since if there's pressure put on it so those type of masks uh, the ones that go around your ear that don't uh, adjust are all too tight like the surgical masks all of them are all way too tight so they pull on my injured part of my ear and they cause extreme pain and so I had to get the around the head ones, the ones that like, I don't know, if you've ever seen any of my tutorials, some of the tutorials, you can see the mask that I'm wearing. It's a white one. Uh, There's a dust mask for when I'm dremeling and it goes behind the head. There's two straps around the head that are yellow. Um, that mask, it's one of those types. I got black ones though, because that was just easier. Uh, it matched my costumes better. So I got those, but um, that's what I had to buy and they would not stay on at all. Like even without wigs, like I had my Among Us cosplay, which I'll post something here. Um, the mask that I had under, I had the helmet up because we're not allowed to have the helmet down because we have to show that we're wearing a mask. But, um, and most of the time I had the helmet off cause it was hot. But um, uh, one of those, I had a KF90 or KN95, whatever, uh, whatever those are called. 
um, and just putting the helmet on made it come off. But even then, it was still just the, the headband that was supposed to go around your head just kept falling right down and then the mask would just fall down with it. So they literally don't even stay on. So I don't know what I was supposed to do. It was either have one that doesn't stay on or have one that literally causes extreme amounts of pain. However, <laughs> like I said, they give accommodations for anybody without proof. All you had to do was say, I can't wear this. And they would say, all right, wear whatever you want. As long as you're wearing a mask, we don't care. So I tested it. I didn't even go to ADA to ask them. On Saturday, I had two on. I had that one and then my Genshin one on over that, my cloth Genshin one. I took that one off. I took the other one off. I actually had one of the, the ear ones and it was starting to hurt really bad. So I took it off, put my Genshin one back on the rest of the day, no one said anything. Not a single staff member that saw me said a single thing. From that point on, I didn't wear the required masks. Nobody said anything, not once. I passed multiple people, went through multiple checks, like where you had to show you had the wristband to say, hey, yeah, this isn't someone else's badge. I actually have this thing to, you know, that kind of thing. That's why they do that. Um, and to get through and be like, here's my badge, here's my band, give them to get through and they said nothing about the masks at all so they didn't even enforce their own rules so and how would they know if somebody got accommodations or not at that point why have the rule in the first place it doesn't make any sense so screw it we just didn't well i didn't because i didn't care uh i literally can't wear them so screw it i'm not going to i'm gonna do what i can and what i'm able to wear and i'll go with that it's fine so there was nothing anybody could do anyway because they can't they can't force me to wear something that literally won't stay on me. So that's not that's not how it works. Um, so if they wanted to just keep coming off, then they can try to force me, but it's not going to work. But and it's not even that I don't want to. It's that I literally can't. So like they literally don't stay on me. So one doesn't stay on, and one causes extreme pain to where I'm going to be like within an hour or two, I'm going to be like nearly in tears because it hurts so bad. So. It, yeah, there's no enforcing going on and it's just crazy. So that's really all the bad that I know of and that I experienced, which I didn't really experience, but you know what I mean. Uh, the good though, honestly, everything else. I don't go to panels, so I can't tell you what those are like <laughs> because I, I just don't. Um, usually I get a little too claustrophobic. I'm not actually like claustrophobic or whatever, like too, like not that big of an extent anyway, as far as I know. But uh, I overheat in rooms like that where there's a lot of people uh, and I start getting lightheaded and stuff. So that's what I think it is. I'm just going off of what I'm feeling and I have to leave. So there's no reason for me to even be there. Then it just looks like I'm an asshole who just left <laughs> in the middle of a panel. So sometimes I can handle it, sometimes I can't. So it just depends. So I just don't do it. Plus there's a lot of other stuff I would like to do, uh, which is the other thing that was good was the attendees because of my filming. So I film at every con, if I, tr I, I try to anyway. I try to get at least one video if I can, whether it be a vlog, a CMV, or something. Uh, this year I did something completely different, which will be out next week. So actually, <laughs> this video is coming out late. Um, you may have noticed that, both this and the other video. They're coming out late because I, the week that they were supposed to come out was we were at the convention. I didn't realize all the timing difference of the, of the dates and screwed that up. So I should have had a video come out while I was at the convention, forgot to do that. And so now I'm doing this in replacement. And then next week, next Saturday, um, will be the next actual video and everything will be back on track. So like, it'll be all timed out correctly after that. The, so next week will be the video that I got. Uh, I decided not to vlog because I was already filming that other stuff. And then I was like, I just want to enjoy my costumes while I'm here. And on Friday I was doing cloud. So that was really difficult to vlog in if not impossible. We've already had this problem at another convention. So yeah, um, Yoonjin was able to be vlogged in, but I was like, I already missed a day. Why, why even bother at this point? Um, so I didn't. And then Sunday, there's just no reason to do it for a, a Sunday at a con. There's nothing to do, whatever. But we did get to film some more stuff on Sunday of uh, my video. So that was good. We, I was actually able to do that. So it's an Among Us video and it'll be out next week. So stay tuned for that. It's completely different from anything else I've ever done. Uh, it may set, it may look like I'm copying people. I promise that's not why I'm doing it. <laughs> um, you'll see when you see it. Wait and watch it. Um, anyway, uh, 
that's about it. I don't think, yeah, because all the Congo were, were really good. Uh, well, oh, um, so part of the video has people falling over. Uh, like, it's consensual and they're doing it. I didn't ask them to do it. The amount of people who are willing to fall down in their costumes to be part of a funny video is astounding. Like, it's crazy. I'm fine with it though if they want to do that. It's not up to me, it's up to them. I let them decide what they want to do. And so every single one, not every single one, but the majority of them were totally like, I didn't even ask them to do anything. I just said, do whatever, I'll, I'll do this and then you do whatever. And they did it on their own without me saying anything. So that was really awesome. And everybody was so happy to be a part of it. And I really hope that everybody liked it. And I really hope all of you guys like it. Um, but other than that, that's everything. There's nothing to really talk about because the, like I said, the convention was a little middle of the road. <laughs> uh, it wasn't too bad or too good. So it's fine. Uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, if you want to see the merch and autograph video, again, that'll be up in the corner somewhere um, and down in the description. So if you like this, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more, and I'll see you guys later.